Hi everybody, it's Peter Zellums, Greeny Flicks Adventure 8, and welcome to another video. Okay, today's video, I'll be talking about the Leica Q2, and also the Leica M11. And in this case here, I've got the Apo 35mm f2, Summicron lens on there. I took both cameras out, I actually did an event, uh, a family event, and I used both. And that's what today's video is about. I'm just going to talk about the experience in using both to capture an event and um, just some of the observations as well. So, just to sort of paint the scenario, it's a family event, an engagement, in fact, my nephew's engagement. And um, the weather conditions, overcast, rainy, miserable, but as far as lighting is concerned, uh, in those sort of environments, you can actually really get nice lighting. It's all soft lighting. Whether you've got enough light is another issue. So it was an afternoon event uh, that went into the evening as well. I decided to start with the Q2. So I had both cameras. The only bag that I took along was my Peak Design 6 litre everyday bag and both these cameras just fit in there nice and neat. So that was good and the only additional equipment that I had was a battery for the Q2 and also a battery for the M11. In both cases I didn't need them. Um, over a course of about um, four hours I end up uh, shooting probably around the 250 photographs. That was JPEGs as well as RAW files. In this event I actually decided just to use a JPEG file. It proves of basically JPEG, bit, bit of cropping and a bit of adjustment in light. Not too much uh, since JPEGs are a bit limited. And uh, the intent was provide the photographs as proofs so that they can be used on social media or whatever. And then for those few photographs that people want to enlarge much more, well, then we can use the raw file, do a bit more work in the editing and lighting and whatever's necessary to keep everyone happy. For now, it's all JPEG files and I'll be able to show some photographs in this video as well. Both cameras are similar size. Now in both cases, I have put on these extra handles. This is an aftermarket one for the Q2. And the reason for doing that was I wanted to get the Arc Swiss plate here. Very similar to the one that you can get from Leica for the M11 so that you can just put it onto a tripod mount. You also have a Peak Design tripod and that has an Arc Swift plate. So you can just basically slide that on that which makes it really good. So I love that idea and I found one on eBay for the Q2 as well. And you can still access the battery as well as the SD card, so that was important. So first observations. All right, I didn't take, I wanted to use a 35mm lens on the M11 rather than going for a 28. I had the 28, obviously I have the 28mm lens, fast 1.7 lens on the Q2. But I know from past experience in doing events, the 35mm also is an outstanding lens. I used to do weddings with 35mm lens all the time. So uh, that's the reason for choosing the two different focal lengths, just to do it again and see what the differences were. So I started off with the Q2. The Q2 is fast. I spent most of the afternoon using the Q2. The lighting conditions were good. I was finding that I was using either aperture priority or automatic setting on the aperture and letting the ISO and shutter speed sort themselves out. Occasionally, I, if I really wanted a, a shallow depth of field, I'd, I'd choose 1.7, otherwise I'd just leave it on automatic. The lighting seemed to be handled quite well by the Q2 and that did depend on the settings that I chose on the back, whether you, you meter for the highlights or whether for the field or whether it's spot. Focus, I was using autofocus, spot focus as well. So I would uh, choose my subject, press down halfway, reframe and take the shot was the process that I was using. In hindsight, I think I could have used uh, face detect more. I was taking people all the time. I could have also used meter for highlights, which is one of the features of the latest firmware update on the Q2. 
28 millimeter lens is a bit wider obviously than 35 so what that meant was and i did notice it a couple of times in the photographs if i was doing a group of say five people then the people on the very edge their heads were slightly elongated because of the wider aspect of the 28 millimeter if i was doing a smaller group of uh, two or three people and or a more of a close-up then it didn't seem to be too much of a problem the advantage of the 28 millimeter lens meant that if you were in a smaller room like this one here you could get you could stand on one side and get a group of five on the other side quite easily without having to you know step in the doorway or something like that but anyway maybe that's a good starting point there uh, on the m11 so the m11 two fundamental differences is it's a range finder it's not automatic focus as far as exposure is concerned, yes, there are similar features to the Q2 on the M11, so expose for highlights. You are using the range finder. If there is lots of light around the place, there's no problems about doing that. In low light situations, you can normally find something uh, around your subject uh, that you can still focus on using the range finder. And uh, right late at night, it can be a bit difficult, so that's something to be aware of. I was shooting at F2 in most cases. I know from past experiences, again, using uh, a 35 millimeter lens for weddings, particularly in weddings, I was using flash photography in the evening. And there I was sh shooting at f4 and 5.6 to give me a fairly large depth of field. And I could just average out my uh, meter distance. So I wasn't really using the, the range finder in low light conditions. I would estimate the distance from me to the camera there is about 1.5 meters or thereabouts. Choose 1.5, 5.6 with a flash, lots of depth of field. There was no problems about focus. I don't know whether there's one, one's better than the other. The thing about an electronic viewfinder is once you start to focus and it, it zooms in quickly to the, to the point that you're focusing on, it can be a bit distracting sort of zooming in, zooming out, zooming in, zooming out uh, every time you use focus assist on this if you're doing manual focus, if it's automatic focus, it's fine. With the Q2, there is a low light uh, focus assist light here, a little green light that shines onto the subject. I find that to be really distracting when I'm taking photographs in low light conditions of people, because all of a sudden that green light comes on, it distracts them, it changes the whole scene. So I've turned that feature off. If I can't focus in low light with automatic focus, which I have noticed sometimes is an issue, then I just change to manual focus and just do that. And if I can't do it manual focus using the you know zoom in, zoom out type thing, and then I will guess the distance using my scales here. Depending on my aperture, I will know roughly what sort of depth of field I have and then take the shot. Main thing is just to get the shot. You might be slightly out of focus, might be a bit blurry, but if you can get the shot, that can make all the difference. Both cameras weigh about the same. Actually, one is probably a bit heavier than the other. I happen to have some scales here, so I can let you know straight away of those two different combos. Q2, like a Q2. Da, 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 da. 830 grams. And the M11 comes in at 830. So that was 830, and this is 950. So it's about 100, 100 odd grams heavier. One of the things I like about the M series cameras is that everything is accessed straight away to the main important points, which is your uh, your aperture, your shutter speed, and your ISO. So you don't really have to go into the menu system at all to work out what you're going to be doing. I turn the photo review off, so I don't have to have the screen lit up at all. So particularly in dark conditions, I'm not having this screen lighting up and going off, lighting up, going off, lighting up, going off all the time. So I just keep that off. Take the shot. If I want to review it, then I just quickly press play, have a quick look to see the shot, see that the exposure was all right, composition was okay, people's eyes weren't closed open or whatever, depending on the type of shot. So that's how I found that. Um, with the Q2, I did have that review on and that was distracting during the course of the photography. Even during the day, I found it distracting with the review coming on particularly when I'm using the viewfinder. So I've turned the review off and I've also turned off the screen so that only when I put my eye to the viewfinder does the electronic viewfinder come on. 
So the preference is always to the viewfinder and not use the back screen. If I want to use the back screen, then I need to go into my favorites and turn it back on. If I went out and did an event again, and I only had access to one camera, which one would I choose? Hmm, good question. Well, maybe it's not so much a camera, but which lens would I choose? Uh, well, you know, I'm still a favorite of the 35 millimeter lens. What I like about the 28 millimeter on the Q2 is, is the quality of the lens. The fact that it's really fast, 1.7, but also the fact that it's an outstanding lens. You've got such good detail right across uh, the, the whole photograph from edge to edge and good contrast. So the lens is in incredible. I did get um, a 28 millimeter lens just also just to do a comparison. In fact, there will be an up, up and coming video. I got the 28 millimeter f2.8 Elmerit lens so this is I think the cheapest 28 millimeter Leica lens you can get in the current lineup you've got the Simicron which is more expensive and the Simulux which is even much more expensive and no doubt the quality changes quite considerably as well so just the first uh, I took some shots with this first impressions are it's not as detailed at 2.8 compared to 2.8 on the Q2. This is a better lens, edge to edge, than the Elmerit. But that's only when you're pixel peaking. It's um, when you're taking event shots. I suspect even this little 28, 2.8 is fine. But uh, in one bag, it's still light. Uh, you've got redundancy. You've got a choice of which camera you want to use depending on the, the type of how the event evolves whether you want something with automatic focus or whether you're happy with the manual focus both are very quick depending on the type of setup one thing i did notice was i guess it's a bit like driving an automatic car versus a manual gear shift car you have to allow just a you know a few minutes or whatever transition period between <laughs> using one and then using the other so Starting off and just shooting the first part of the event with the Q2 was fine and then putting that away and then shooting the event with the M11 and manual focus with the change of lighting. It was much darker, internal lights. Um, that also worked fine rather than chopping and changing all the time, choosing one and the other. Anyway, that's another observation. Uh, I think that's it. You might have seen a few photos already in the video once I've edited this and there's a few more photos that I'll show as well just of the event. All in all, happy with the event. Everyone was happy with the photographs, uh, capturing the moment, capturing the essence of the event and uh, it, was, it was great. And it was great using both cameras. I hope this has been useful. Uh, if you had a choice, putting money aside, there's a big difference in costs. The Q2 is outstanding value because you're getting an outstanding lens and a great uh, sensor um, at um, one half to one third the price of this combination. So, but uh, anyway, if you put price aside, which would you use? Would you go for the 28 millimeter lens for events? Hold it in the house, particularly because you got limited by size. Would you still stick to the 35? I hope you found that useful. I, um, if you like the video, then give it a thumbs up. That, that's really appreciated. And if it's the first time to my channel, then do subscribe. Press notifications. You'll be notified when the next video is out. And if you really like the video, then there is a, something called a, a super thanks, um, which you can click and you can donate a couple of bucks to the channel. That just helps fund the costs of actually creating content for you guys to see. Thanks again for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks, cheers.